Admiral Havelock and Lord Pendleton are in the courtyard. I expect they'll want to congratulate you. He's alive. Thank you, Corvo, thank you. My uncle's a good man, and one day he'll prove it. Here. I know you did this for the right reasons, but I want you to take this as a reward. It's an old heirloom one of my aunts gave me. They're all corrupt. If this is going to work, we have to take down the Lord Regent and all of his key allies. You know that. Yes. Hopefully the High Overseer is the first step along that path. And we must find a girl. Emily. Poor thing. Who knows what her mind is like being there when her mother was killed. I'd imagine the daughter of an Empress is tougher than you think. Hmm. Quite right. In any case, we won't get the Lord Regent until we weaken his base. All the pieces are in play. He controls the City Watch. Through Campbell, he had the religious faction. Someone is funding the military. And he currently has a majority in Parliament. Yes, I'm aware of that. My brothers control the voting bloc for my family. I'm very much aware of that. Can I be of service to you? There is something to you, isn't there? You went and spanked the High Overseer in his own house. I hope the tools I designed for you function to your satisfaction. The fact that I am standing here and talking to you affirms that this is true in several ways. Chapter 28. Waverly, Waverly, Waverly. The very name sweeps one away. She came into our cold marble hall and brought light and warmth. She changed our lives forever. It was only later I realized she was a traitorous little weasel, like all the boils. A 
Attention, Dunwall citizens. You are reminded that assaulting a member of the... Yeah, it's nice. It's not anyone who can walk into Holger Square and put down the High Overseer. And now we're faced with the question, could he be dangerous? Events are going to move quickly now. The storm's rising. Emergency grain rations will be available in the Civil Services District at Sunrise. Please see your tax assessor to secure food coupons before requesting rations. Welcome back, Master Corvo. Attention, Dunwall citizens. This is a reminder that walls of light erected in our streets are for your protection. However, they will respond to any touch or approach with lethal force. Furthermore, it is a misdemeanor to throw any object or animal into a wall of light, whether for a You did it. Somehow you took down the High Overseer Campbell against the odds. I knew you were our man, Corvo. With Campbell gone, we've hurt the Lord Regent immeasurably. And with Martin back, we'll have the finest strategist alive. The Lord Regent must be shitting himself in Dunwall Tower. Yes, and Campbell's journal, let's not forget. Our hope is that in these encoded pages, the location and condition of Emily Caldwin can be discovered. Our entire movement will mean nothing if we can't place the rightful heir on the throne. We must act fast. No doubt the Lord Regent is holding Emily somewhere, waiting to reveal her, to step out as the hero and further cement his regency. If he doesn't bring the young lady forth soon, there will be infighting among the nobles as to who should succeed the Empress. Yes, time is against us. But now you should take a well-earned rest, Corvo. We will decipher the contents of the High Overseer's journal and share them with you later. Chapter 32. 
As yet, I have said little of my brothers Morgan and Custis. Twins they are, and four years senior to me. Morgan is the larger of the two brutes by a slight bit. From earliest memory, they abused me in every way. I'm not the first to claim their elder siblings were cruel, but my suffering was unique. I promise you. At the tender age of five, they tied me to the crib and set inside it assorted vipers they had collected over several weeks. My howls and my breathing were muffled by a blanket, and so it was hours before the nurse found me barely alive. I had kicked a few serpents to a pulp and others had slithered away, but not before I'd been bitten a dozen times or more on my legs, arms, and face. The wounds kept me convalescing for months while those two got away with barely a tongue lashing. Wallace! Bring me wine. <clears throat> Tomorrow I will regale you with the special gift they gave me on my tent. This place would fall apart in ten minutes without me. Is that so? In any case, you can't dismiss me. I went through the books this morning and found five mistakes you've made. Very well. You're lucky I found them before the Admiral did. the golden cat not as a patron mind you i designed some specialized devices for them i kept the blueprints if anyone is curious don't i brought you tea as a courtesy to a colleague i won't make that mistake in the future i'm sorry i only thought never mind what i thought thank you for the tea i have to get back to the admiral he has news for me Master Piero has a great deal to learn in some areas. Corvo, my friend. Do you need ammunition or weaponry? Would you like me to craft something for you? roaming all over the city. This movement will have a cost. For some of us, it will be very high. Hello, Corvo. I expect Martin will be joining us shortly. I hate to start your day with such a strange matter, but the servants heard something last night, moving through the storm drains beneath the building. Most likely a weeper, the poor bastard. There's no hope for them once the plague gets that far along. Nothing more than a shuffling corpse full of sickness and insects, if you ask me. I'd appreciate you investigating, just to be sure it's not a nosy guardsman that's getting too close. Here's a key to the hatches. I'd send a servant down there, but they'd die of fear on the spot, I'm afraid. Maybe Piero can concoct some sort of sleep poison for your crossbow if you want to go that route. It is every citizen's duty to report freedom of speech and action. Nice. 
Rye. He's with Admiral Havelock now. They want to talk to you. Dust here, dust there. Feels like the whole world is dusty. Corvo, I trust you remember Martin, an overseer before and perhaps again someday soon. I owe you thanks for my rescue. Indeed. You've given us a glimmer of hope, Corvo. Because we've gotten what we wanted from Campbell's journal. You've done it. We know where Emily Caldwin is being held. The Golden Cat, of all places. A bathhouse for aristocrats. Little better than a cursed brothel. But there's an unfortunate twist. It appears that Pendleton's own kinsmen stand in our way. The twins, Morgan and Custis. Not only are they controlling Emily, but they have the controlling parliamentary votes we so desperately need. Yes, the Pendletons have to die. But most importantly, Emily must be brought here safely so we can protect her until the Lord Regent and his entourage have been dealt with. Pendleton's waiting for you on the dock. He's asked to brief you personally. I think it's best. Corvo, a moment if I may. Corvo, I've asked to speak to you myself. You see, I'm sending you to kill my older brothers, Morgan and Custis. They're horrible men. It's true, as you may have heard, cruel beyond words. Further, my brothers are close allies to the Lord Regent, and as long as they are in Parliament, we cannot gather the votes we'll need to stop the Lord Regent from further consolidating his power. These days, they're best known for exploiting their favor with him to cheat others out of their wealth. Let's just say that not every family evicted in quarantine for having the plague actually has the plague. I warned my brothers in every way I could. I really did. But they never did listen to me. They'll be at the Golden Cat tonight at their usual revels. They'll be protected by the City Watch, so it'll be dangerous. Now go. Please do it before I change my mind. Campbell's book appears to contain much more than we expected. He was blackmailing a number of highly ranked overseers. With the information in his journal, we will be able to manipulate the religious faction. The overseers will bend to our will. I'll take you to the Golden Cat when you're ready. I've taken Lord Pendleton enough times, believe me. 